Hey everybody, I'm Giles and this is JDM World. So today I got a little introspective and I was thinking about DIY, especially in the, the home theater world. And does it make sense to do it? I mean, from a financial point of view, from a dollars and cents point of view, is it the right thing to do? And I guess it really depends on why you do DIY and uh, I kind of classify it into, into three different reasons. At least these are the ones that came to my mind. If there's something else that you think of, drop it down in the comments. But first, they're the people that want to build something that they can't buy. So they want a super huge speaker or, you know, four 18 subs or 21s or 24s or 32s. Just, you know, something that's not readily available in the commercial world. And the second group are folks that just like to build stuff. So the other considerations don't really matter because they just want to build it. So they're going to get the, get the parts and, and do what they got to do. But the third group of people are folks that are looking for a value. So in their minds, they feel that if they put the sweat equity in and they go out and buy the parts and do all the research, they can build something that performs better than a comparable retail unit, but at a lower price point. And that's really what I want to, what I want to focus in on. Is it really less expensive to build a speaker rather than buying it? Now, I've completed a handful of uh, DIY subwoofer builds, so have the most experience there. So let's kind of focus in on those, right? So there's a billion different kinds of speakers that you can go out and buy, and there's a billion that you can that you can build. Um, but let's think specifically about home theater 18-inch subs, and. Uh, Let's take it from the point of view of someone who's not a carpenter. So you don't have all the tools, so you don't have the table saws and the, and the wall saws and this, that, and the other. You've just got the basics and you say to yourself, hey, I want a rockin' subwoofer environment for my home theater, so I'm gonna build it myself. Now, what does that really cost? And what we'll do is then compare it to some uh, models that I pulled up on the internet so we can look at what that cost difference is. Now, I've got some notes here. So I would recommend if you wanna build kind of a standard DIY uh, subwoofer to look at GSG kits, right? Uh, so these are the Marty line. So uh, I think if you're watching this, you probably know what it is, but if you don't, I'll put a link up here so you can check that out. But the Marty subwoofers are, are large or smaller, depending on the model that you get, uh, slot ported boxes that are designed for low frequency home theater use. And the kits from GSG, they're kind of like Erector sets, right? You Or Ikea furniture, really. So you buy these things and you can slap them together pretty easy at a good cost. Now, uh, let's, let's go ahead and build two because you never want just one subwoofer, right? So if you buy the GSG kit for two full Marty 18 inch cabinets. That's gonna be 417 bucks plus about $100 in shipping depending on where you live at. So let's just call that 517. Now you've got the boxes and then from there, you're gonna need some drivers. And the drivers that are very, very popular for this are the uh, Ultimax UM 1822s. Now those run 255 each, so that's gonna be what? 255, 510 for a pair of them. Um, so I'm gonna keep track of this on the side here so we can look at the, the running total and the cost. And then you have to have amplification and DSP for them. Uh, probably the most popular amplifier for these are the old iNukes and uh, these are by Behringer. And Behringer has a new model of this called the uh, NX6000D. And that guy is running, looks like 550 right now. So let's pop that up there as well. So those are the core hardware components, the box, the driver, and the amplification. But that is just the start. Now those are the most expensive pieces, but remember, you're doing this at home, so you've gotta have all the other bits and pieces. So uh, let's let's run through those two. So now you have to have some kind of cable the, to run from your AVR to your amplifier, that new NX6000D that we just talked about. And uh, Seismic makes one of those, and it's 14 bucks for that guy. It's a RCA to XLR. Uh, double, so it's got two RCAs to two XLRs. Now, some people say you need to get a clean box and all this other stuff, but in general practice, no one really needs to worry about the uh, the 
power level coming out of that RCA to the XL, XLR in this application. It's, it's plenty of juice to, uh, to fire that amplifier up. Uh, from there, you also need um, on the back of the subwoofer box, the speak on connector. And uh, that is gonna be the speak on Nutrix uh, and though you only two of those. So there it's about 13 bucks um, for the pair of those. Um, from there, you also need uh, speak on cables and the speak on, this is the power cable that goes from the amp to the subwoofer and you need two of those. So that's 15 bucks by two. So about 30 bucks from there. Um, you're gonna need glue. Type bond three is the one that I like to use. It takes a little bit longer to set. So, uh, I prefer that, it makes the build easier. Um, 32 ounces is gonna be 19 bucks. You're gonna need some wire. So uh, 12 gauge, small spool, $25. Uh, you gotta paint the box. So Duratex is the most popular paint for this uh, and that's 75 bucks a gallon. Now that gallon is gonna do more than just two of these subwoofer boxes, but it's better to have more than less. You'll have to have screws to actually screw the subwoofer into the box. And uh, the ones I like come from Parts Express and they are uh, 30 millimeter M5 cap head screws. And uh, you know, they're black and they have the interesting head on it. So they actually look nice. Um, those are 13 bucks for I think a hundred. Uh, so they're pricey, but I think it's worth it for this application, looks good. Um, you'll also need speaker gasket uh, to line around the edge where the, the speaker fits onto the lip. That's about 10 bucks. And the next thing you need are clamps. You have to have clamps, you can't forget clamps. Um, I would do four 60 inch clamps at uh, 16 bucks each and four 32 inch clamps. And the 32 inch ones you can get in the, uh, I don't know, whatever this is called that makes them close up, um, but they're a little more expensive at 20 by four. Um, and beyond that is just bits and pieces of hardware. So you'll need some screws and washers and that kind of thing to put this all together. And that's gonna be another 20 bucks or so that you would add on. So when you add all of that up, that's gonna be just shy of $1,900. And that with your sweat equity, your labor uh, will give you two amazing home theater subwoofers that perform well down into the teens, you know, 15 hertz, 14, 13, 12, 11, um, and will literally rock your world. If you put them near field, your, your sofa will want to do the subwoofer dance as you're just pounding out the sound. So it's a, it's a pretty impressive feat. Uh, of, uh, of engineering to have these two subs just slamming at you in your home theater. It sounds really nice. So if you haven't heard these before, they're all over the place. So I would suggest jumping on a forum or on Facebook and, and finding someone that you can listen to them because they're, they're pretty compelling. Now for that 1900 bucks, or maybe just call it two grand, um, you get a lot, but going back to our question, is it worth it? So do you save enough money going that route um, as opposed to uh, as opposed to a commercial route. So now I did a little research and uh, if you look at Seton, the F-18, so you get F-18 and then the Slave, uh, the Master is $23.95 I think it is, and the Slave is $13.95. Uh, and then you had to pay for shipping, so you're well into what's that, two, three, four thousand bucks almost. Yeah, that's uh, it's like half. Half price. Now, the Setons are, are amazing subwoofers, but I don't think that just from a sound point of view, they're worth an extra two grand. Now, if you don't want to do the build um, and you can't get the finished look that they have, then that two grand might be worth it to you. Then you have SVS. While they don't have uh, an 18, their top end unit is a 16 inch ported box and it goes for $24.99 each. So you're looking at five grand to get into two of those as opposed to two grand uh, to get into the GSG Full Martys. Um, and I would put the Full Martys head to head with those subs every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Um, and I think most everybody else would as well. So from there, we can look at PSA. They've got an 18 inch PSV1811, I think it is. And those guys go for 1450 for the pair. So that's 2,900. So that's a lot closer, um, uh, but still another thousand bucks above what you're doing with your, your home build. And, and that's really for what I did research from, it was the closest price that would even be kind of comparable. Um, Klipsch makes a great set of speakers, um, the KPT884SWs, but they're 3,900 bucks 
each. So that's you know almost eight grand for the pair of those. And then finally, JTR, which is another amazing subwoofer producer. Um, their Captivator 2400s, or the 2400 LFE, I think it is. No, the 2400 ULF is uh, 26.99 each. So again, you're over five grand uh, getting into the Captivators. So I think if you look at just the cost of everything, um, DIY, tells a very compelling story. I mean, this the cost is, is lower in every case. Now, you can go and buy a subwoofer solution that costs less than the DIY, but from a performance point of view, it's just not gonna match up. I mean, these DIY subwoofers, for the money, are gonna come out on, on top, I think, just about every time. Now, there are other DIY solutions outside of the GSG and the 18s that you can pursue that might give you a better uh, dollar per decibel maybe is the, the right measure um, than the, the full Marty's, uh, but that's another research project uh, in and of itself. So I guess to summarize, if you wanna do a build and you can, there are ways that you don't have to buy a lot of tools that will give you a product that might not look as good or definitely won't look as good if you don't have experience building things than something that you can buy off the shelf. But the price is gonna be half or less than half, uh, depending on at what you're looking at. So I'm gonna say that yes, doing a DIY subwoofer build is absolutely worth it. And you know, if you've done a DIY subwoofer build, I would love to see it down, down in the comments. I, I love to look at this kind of stuff. And I'll put some links up uh, for the bills that I've done myself. I've got two sealed, or one sealed build and a couple of ported bills uh, with videos. And I'm about to build a new Devastator from GSG. And that's a horn loaded uh, slot ported uh, Devastator of a subwoofer uh, using a 21 inch driver. And I'm gonna use the new uh, 21 inch from Eminence, which is kind of the new kit on the block and it should be pretty cool. I'm just waiting on Eminence to actually uh, deliver that subwoofer. So that, that'll be fun. So yeah, drop a comment down below. Uh, let us know what you've done. Uh, put some you know links to pictures if you've got them or maybe you have a thread on AVS forum, something like that. It would be really cool to, to take a look at those. And as always, if you enjoy the video, please like and absolutely subscribe. And if you have a large family with a lot of accounts, get them to subscribe too. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully if you go down the DIY journey, it'll be fun for you too.